Hello everyone, Luca Blight here, and I'm doing another, not really a response video per se, but um, there's three videos that are kind of serving as the medium for the point that I want to focus more on. It has less to do with the whole SJWs, uh, Meninists, whatever that stupid, you know, argument case may be, but rather diversity in gaming itself and when it works and when it just doesn't fucking work. So... It's no fucking secret, I'm kind of, like, behind everybody else. I'm making videos in regards to Angry Joe and his response to EA's pre-orders being weak and strawmanning certain people, such as conservatives, right-wing-leaning people, Trump supporters, stuff like that in the video that I have linked here. So this isn't really an attack on Joe or an attack on his opinion, because plenty of people have already done that, and they've done it better than me, but I do kind of want to touch on the the topic of diversity in gaming, and again, where it works, where it doesn't work. So, when people try to put diversity to gaming, it's like, it's not just a bunch of white dudes, or it's not just a bunch of straight white dudes, you know, in the game, which not many mainstream games really go that route anymore. Like, there's going to be a combination of characters from different backgrounds. And the problem with um, forcing diversity is when you make their differences they're defining traits like you know this character is black for the sake of being black or this character is gay for the sake of being gay that that's pandering to the crowd that you're trying to represent and you're going about it the complete wrong way uh three games off the top of my head i can say did the, well actually five games um since one's a trilogy i could say nailed the whole diversity thing perfectly without making it a shoehorned political social message whatever the case may be and that is Mass Effects 1 through 3, Dragon Age Origins, and Fallout, or actually the Fallout series in general has done really good with tackling, like, racial discrimination, and also, you know, not really, you know, spoon-lighting, spoon-lighting, that's a phrase, I don't know what the hell that means, but uh, I guess spotlighting is what I meant to say, like, homosexuality and stuff like that, like, it's just treated as a normal thing. It's nothing unique, it's nothing special, there's no character defined by that, by that trait, um... And so, like, their, you know, their uh, sexual orientation isn't really the forefront of their character. It's just kind of there. It's just part of them. Take, um, let's see, in uh, Dragon Age, um, what's that elf dude's name? It starts with a Z, but uh, you, you, if you play Dragon Age, you know who I'm talking about. But he is a bisexual character, but it's a part of his personality. Because he's just this suave, charming guy that, you know, will try to sweet-talk his way into getting into your pants, whether you're male or female. But that's not really his defining trait. His defining trait is more about his background as an assassin and some of the shit that he's dealt with, being betrayed, uh, trying to survive, and stuff like that. Same thing with Loliana. She's bisexual, but she does that whole, you know, trying to get by, trying to survive. She was backstabbed by someone she genuinely cared about and loved. And eventually, um, you do confront her, and you get to choose whether to kill her or not, which I always go with killing her, because I'm like, th th this is a bitch that's going to come back and bite you in the SLA. I'll just get rid of her. Just be done with it. Uh, I would contend Dragon Age 2, but I don't know what it is, but it's, especially in the cases of uh, Anders and, um, not really Fenris, but mostly Anders, where he kind of just somewhat forces himself onto you, which Angry Joe actually made a very valid point in his uh, review on this entire thing. So, uh, but, so yeah, you know, the, Dragon Age 2 didn't really handle it. Dragon Age Inquisition, people have, I, I've seen a couple of people say Dorian feels a little, uh, a little focused on being a gay dude, but I'm like, that's that only comes up in his, um, his, his, uh, fucking whatchamacallit, his, his heritage, or whatever. Like, his father wants him to marry a chick and, you know, carry the bloodline, which that's it's a medieval setting, so that it's that, that doesn't feel forced. That actually makes sense. You know, Dorian wants to do his own thing. His dad's like, no, you gotta continue the family legacy, you know, because that's how politics in uh, the Venture Imperium work. You know, this this all about the lineage, the bloodlines, carrying on the bloodline, whereas, you know, they can't, it seems like they focus, they're more like a bunch of Tywins, where they care about the legacy of the family, as opposed to the wants and needs of the individual within the family. But, I mean, even with that being all said, like, even your villainous characters, your protagonistic characters, they don't really, you know, go on an anti-gay sort of thing in any of the Dragon Ages. So I do feel like, while Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition didn't handle it as well as Origins, they did handle it relatively well. It, it did feel forced. And other people have brought up the transgender character who's part of Iron Bull's group or whatever. Yeah, that was a little on the nose, but 
I I kind of got over it because that was an otherwise forgettable character that didn't really mean much in the end anyways because you, you can actually kill his character off, off um, not much farther after getting them. So it's kind of like, eh, whatever. I didn't really care. I did It wasn't in my face, but I felt it was a little, uh, hey, we have this character that has this trait about them and we're going to make something of a big deal out of it whenever you talk about this character. So I could see both sides of the coin, but again, it, it wasn't a big deal to me. Kind of like this whole Battlefield 5 thing. Well, A, I don't play Battlefield 5. And again, this isn't about Angry Joe or Battlefield 5 or the women's in the World War II or anything like that. Or them having katanas and prosthetic arms or whatever the case may be. Um, but I will also contend that EA has been fucking up left, right, center, and then some. And so a lot of this, I guess, outrage towards Battlefield can be attributed to how they've handled the Battlefront games all the microtransaction bullshit, and you think about all of that, you put that into account, um, and Edgar Cho did bring up how it's coming out in, in between Red Dead Redemption and uh, the, the next Call of Duty game, which, okay, that's not really a strong argument that could be a factor, but it's not a strong argument. It's kind of like how people said the Han Solo movie failed because of Deadpool 2 coming out at the same time as it. It's like, no, not really, it's because Han Solo was like jam-packed with fucking social commentary and whatnot, and I, I didn't see the movie, so I don't know how jam-packed it is, but from what I heard, it's very jam-packed with a lot of uh, social progressism type of shit, which I don't care to see that in a Star Wars movie, uh, or, or, in, or I mean, unless it's like a commentary movie about like the struggles of women in the 1920s, or the struggles of the civil rights in the 1960s, like for example, the, uh, the Black Klansman movie that came out, that actually sounds interesting, because I did not even know about this guy that actually infiltrated the KKK and has like a certification hung up in his wall. It's just kind of like the biggest fuck you to the, to the Ku Klux sandwich. That, that just sounds fucking awesome. So, you know, you can have movies like that where that is the forefront. That is the entire point, especially if they have that historical uh, context that has affected modern society. That shit works. Um, but yeah, like, like, you know, the point I'm trying to hammer home with the whole diversity thing is just, Make it flow into your story naturally or into your whatever medium it is naturally. Don't try to pander to any particular crowd and make the defining trait of this character all about their sexuality, their orientation, their race, whatever. Because there's more to a person than any of that. That That is actually a small modicum of what that person is uh, in terms of storytelling and stuff like that. So, Angry Joe... Oh. Before I move on, I, I want to highlight here the like to dislike ratio, which tells you Angry Joe did not handle this very well. He did take oops, he did take quite a hit in the subs. Um, not not a, not a hit to where he's not going to make a recovery. This will blow over in like a couple weeks. You know, something else will pop up and people will forget about Angry Joe and what he said, and he'll make a review about whatever, and people will sub back to him. So th this isn't going to hurt Joe in the long run. He he's going to be fine. Um, so he did a response, and similar to the first video, yeah, it didn't go over so well. Again, he made a very bad argument, a piss-poor, straw-man-infested argument that just... <laughs> he, he, I, see, the thing with Joe is that there are a lot of points he makes that are really good, but at the same time, when it comes to some of the social politics, the social representation or whatever, he's a little on the nose. Like, I just... I just can't really get behind a lot of the things he says. And, and it's the same thing goes with, like, Razor Fist and Jim Sterling. They say a lot of things I don't like, but I do enjoy their gaming content. And, you know, every now and again, Jim Sterling and Razor Fist will say things on their political side, or on the political side of things. So I'm like, yeah, I can, I can, I can agree to that, you know. And even when I'm dis I completely disagree with everything they say, I, I, I will still listen to them because I do find uh, Razor Fist entertaining as hell. Like, he could be ranting about something and could be completely wrong in my eyes, but I would still... Love it because the dude just goes like there are no pauses, no breaks. He doesn't, you know, stutter over his words like I tend to do. That dude just rolls. He just spits fire. And I fucking love that. Um, Jim Sterling, not 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 really entertaining when it comes to his political stuff, but he's entertaining with his gaming stuff. So I do value his gaming commentary more than his political commentary. And at the same time, I love his gaming commentary more than I disagree with his or not disagree, but dislike his political commentary, and again, every now and again, I agree, or I agree with them on some things, but for the most part, not really, and politics, I try to keep that shit off my channel, I don't really care to talk about it, but, you know, in the case of, like, diversity, that, that is kind of part of gaming, because there's this big push to get it out there, and whatnot, and some are doing it okay, some are doing it well, and some are just shooting that shit uh, right into your ass, 
Um, Battlefield Five again. I don't really have an opinion on that. Um, uh, as far as women being in the game, historically speaking, there were women that did fight in World War II. Yes, it was a very, very small percentage, but women did fight in World War II. But for them to be these big action heroes, okay, I can kind of see where the frustration and whatnot is coming from. And maybe this, maybe they should have gone with a. I would almost say, like, if if they're doing like prosthetic arms or what have you, go do a fucking like World War One or World War Two meets steampunk because that that would be fucking cool. You know, it, it doesn't have to be completely historically accurate as long as it's a fun game. That, in the end, is all I care about. Now, as far as this being like them trying to shove social justice into the game, I can't really say one way or the other because, again, I'm not really following the Battlefield story. I'm just following what's going on with Angry Joe and then just the idea of diversity in gaming in, in general. So that's just my take on that whole thing. So, yeah, Angry Joe did not handle the criticism very well. He did not handle the outrage very well but you know he's 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 still doing better than uh fucking mundane matt um so yeah another uh video i want to bring up real quick which uh this will probably be the last thing that i bring up uh it's on the on the grounds of high diversity high diversity fucking red high guardian spice all right so crunchyroll has an anime or, or animated show i should say uh don't want to piss off the anime elitists you know call a show an, an anime when it's not really an anime in their eyes but anyways um so, Raging Golden Eagle, uh, I'm going to leave a link to this video and his channel, and I'll also do the same for Angry Joe's videos, um, since I did kind of use, I didn't really use the footage, but they were included, and I need to source my stuff, you know, if I'm going to bring it up, so that way I'm not making shit or misrepresenting or anything like that. But uh, anyway, Crunchyroll has this uh, High Guardian Spice animation show coming out, and the trailer for it, or the, I don't even know if it's really a trailer, it's more like an announcement video, um, it was not very good. It didn't really sell the story very well. It just basically amounted to four girls want to become like witches or guardians or whatever the case so that they can be heroes and stuff. And there were a couple of comments in this uh, thing here. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, I know. Wait, no, that might come later. But they were comparing the premise to Ruby. And I was like, ah, <laughs> a little bit, almost. But I, it, uh, from what I, uh, from, yeah, fucking hell, if I can't, if if I can fucking speak straight. Um, the article that uh, uh, Raging Golden Eagle here pointed out, it does do it does describe the show a lot better than what the trailer did. And the problem with the trailer is that they were uh, more or less selling their politics than they were selling the story. And so uh, you can already like that already gives me a bad impression of like, oh great, they're putting their they're put they're putting the cart before the horse with their story because like if you can tell a good story. That give, it gets me immersed in the world, and you want to have social commentary along the way. That's how you fucking do it. Because let's see, Spon SpongeBob did that. Powerpuff Girls did that. Powerpuff Girls did that really fucking well. Dexter's Lab did it to a degree. Uh, there were a couple of other sh Cartoon Network shows that did that sort of stuff, and it was subtle. It was like in your face. Um, a lot of it I didn't even pick up until I was older. But you know, they did a lot of social commentary and stuff like that in their shows. And but they didn't put, as I said, the cart before the horse. They were still telling a fun and entertaining story, being funny, being goofy, ludicrous, whatever the case may be, while they had that stuff just kind of in the background. Like, it would just be like maybe a quick comment or a short speech by one of the characters and what have you. But um, another thing, uh, let me see if I can find the thumb, the part of the thing he wants to hear. Yeah, here's the Crunchyroll tidbits. Uh, where's it at? Where'd it go? This, this helps illustrate the point that I want to make. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. All right, so what do all these women have in common? They're all white. And they're toting this whole, like, oh, we have this diverse team working on this show. And it's like, the only diversity I see going on here is the different colors of hair. Um, other than that, it's all a bunch of white chicks. And I think there's one dude that's working on this. But if they're, they're, they're toting this whole diversity thing um, as a way to promote their show, but they don't really talk about the show. In fact, the Crunchyroll article does a better job doing that than this video in the uh, link here, which you can... I, I'll see if I can hunt down the video on Crunchyroll's YouTube channel, um, and then I'll, I'll post that down below. You can kind of see what I'm talking about, where they mention it like maybe once, and then they talk about the production team or the writer team or what whatever the case may be. 
Like, we're a diverse group. It's like, no, the fuck you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You may have diverse ideas, but you're not a diverse group. Um, so I just I just thought that was a little funny. Now, Ragey Golden Eagle actually points that out. Um, I wanted to cam. Yeah, it's because I want to check the timer. But uh, yeah, Ragey Golden Eagle, he did like a whole live stream about this. Uh, there's another video that I watched that talked about this. And it's a lot shorter. So if you don't want to sit through the whole like hour and a half, you know, let's do it in the background. There's a video. It's like five or six minutes long by... Uh, let me see if I can find it. My histories. Let's see. Let's see. It should be. Yeah, because I did watch it today. Or was it yesterday? Yes. No, that's not it. Ah, here we go. I do want to say this is the video. I'll give it a quick watch, and then I'll let you know. But, uh, yeah. Digibro. Oh, wait. No, no, no. No, this isn't it. This isn't it, I don't think. God, I'm, like, failing on my own video right now. Uh, my diversity. Yep, yeah, okay, here we go. So, no. Yeah, we're not going to listen to him talk, but uh, I will leave a link to this video as well. Actually, I got all my links set up, so sweet. All right, so that's all I wanted to kind of talk about was to point out where diversity can work and where it can't work, or where it doesn't work, rather. And it's like, if you, if you want diversity in your story, that's cool, because in a story that I, myself, am writing, I do have that, but it's not at the forefront. It's just kind of like, it's along the way. It's sprinkled in, but it's not, like, in your face. It's not like, oh, I'm a gay man, and, uh, you know, I, that's, all, that's, that's my defining trait. And it's like, no, the, the, being gay is not, that's not part of it. I mean, it's part of a character, but it's not what defines a character, because there is more to a person than their gender identity, their orientation, their race, and stuff like that. And you just gotta, like, like among your, uh, your protagonistic characters, you generally want to have it to where they just look at it as like a normal thing. They don't treat it as it's special or whatever the case may be. Because you want because you know, you want everybody to feel normalized within the group and whatnot. Um I'm trying to make sure I word this carefully because I don't want to say something that I don't mean or come off as being uh facetious or what have you. But it's you know, it's like the way Dragon Age handled it where, you know, it's like, oh the dude's the dude doesn't specifically say he's gay or that she's gay. It's just kinda like brought up in a natural discussion that flows naturally. I meant to say it flows naturally. A conversation that flows naturally is what I meant to say. Instead of making it like a defining characteristic of this individual and stuff like that. So, and you know, putting the cart before the, or yeah, putting the cart before the horse, that's going to ruin it because you're, you're putting your politics ahead of your story. And that's going to turn a lot of people off from listening to anything or even bothering to give your show the time of day. Uh, which is what happened to Ghostbusters, the, uh, the all-female cast Ghostbusters. That's why that movie slumped, um, and that's also why Han Solo slumped. Although, I'd make an argument that nobody really wanted to see the Han Solo movie. Um, because A, nobody was asking for it, and B, your casual moviegoers probably aren't going to go to see it. Um, and the majority of like your hardcore Star Wars fans, they'll go like repeated number of times. Uh, but, you know, your, your casual moviegoers, they're, they're going to be more interested in seeing Deadpool than they are Han Solo. So, you know, like I said, that argument that Angry Joe brought up about, um, you know, uh, Call of Duty, Red Dead Redemption, and Battlefield, I guess, all coming out around the same time. I'm like, eh, that's, that's a point, but it's probably not the main drive behind this. Uh, as far as what the main drive but, but in behind uh, Battlefield not doing well, like I said, it could be attributed to the EA just, you know, re like they're really getting uh, cons like consumer backlash for the way they've handled the Battlefront series. Since they, you know, were, re were given back the exclusive rights by Disney and stuff like that. So, yeah. But anyways, you know, that's just kind of what I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to leave the links down below to all the videos I spoke about. Uh, again, give Raging Golden Eagle uh, a look at. He's, he's got some pretty good commentary on, like, anime and whatnot. And then Manga Common, I don't really know much about him. But, uh, you know, again, this is a video I picked up. So if you want to check out his kind of stuff, which you can see another video, uh, Top 7 Worst Game Theory Videos. All right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, folks, have a look at lights, and I shall see you all for whatever video I upload next.